There's a courthouse square There's a swap meet there Local folk in the trading local ways There's a game of tag On the other side Kids being kids in a simpler place in time Running through their innocence in life It's America It's Americana It's red, white, and blue It's me, it's you, it's the finest it's America I like meat and taters Land of the free Home of the brave It's the greatest It's America on sign at the Cadillac bar and some good old boys in there talking about nice car there's a game of pool on the other side nothing fancy here like mom's apple pie that's good old boys and they're living the good old life. It's America. It's Americana. It's red, white, and blue. It's me, it's you, it's the finest. It's America. Like meat and taters.
circles He got me looking square in the eye Now I'm kind of bending over backwards Trying to keep you satisfied He got me paid back some of what you're taking And you're taking all my love away You pay back so hell You've got hell to pay No more long nights No more long nights You won't find me waiting no more I won't stand for what you're doing Sitting down, not waiting for your knock on my door And I'm tired of waiting And now I'm contemplating exactly what I want to say I said to pay back so hell You've got hell to pay Take to the checkout counter Mama, I'm checking out of here You want some train, find it in yourself Then I hope I'm making that a perfectly clear Welcome to Del Marvelous Americana. I'm your host, Billy Earl Amos. This weekly program aims to examine the voices, the sounds, and the personalities of those people whose labor of love is music and the arts. Whether it's a local favorite or a rising regional act, we'll spend some time with them and their music here on WSDL 90.7 FM, streaming on delmarvapublicmedia.org. And you can also find us on YouTube channel and on Pack 14 in Salisbury. Because, as we all know, a life without live music just ain't hardly worth it. Hi there, this is Billy Earl on Del Marvelous Americana, WSDL 90.7. We are honored today to have a gentleman who is considered by many to be the musical emeritus of the eastern shore of Maryland, Mr. Bird Dog Wheeler. Bird Dog. Pleasure thank, to be here, Billy Earl. Thank you so much Pleasure for coming. Pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. I know you've been jetting around the USA today. You're coming in from <laughs> South Carolina, but we're just thrilled to have you here with us. You know something? In um, When you start looking at, at musicians and you start talking to them and you start getting to know them, you learn a lot about... Um, where they are kind of today, but you don't necessarily get a good feel for what got them here. Tell us your journey. How did you end up being Bird Dog Wheeler? Uh, through the music side, um, it, um, the Bird Dog part is a family name to begin with. So m my grandfather and my uncle raised Bird Dog. So that's where that all started. But um, Great name. 
But the Road Kings came from, my father was a truck driver, so uh, he had a Road King magazine that came from uh, like 76 gas stations and truck stops throughout the country back in the back in the 60s and 70s. Yeah. And, uh, and it came to the house, so we decided to call it the Road Kings. And, uh, Good and, name. And, and mix in the, we did a lot of truck driving songs, still do. Love truck driving music. Grew yeah. up with it. Um, the music part uh, started on a bet or on a dare and uh, in high school. And um, the band was looking for a lead singer to do the talent show. So I said, I'll do that. <laughs> a, a band. And uh, they had a lead singer, but he had graduated from high school, so he couldn't do it. Where'd you go to high school, Easton? Easton High School, okay. yeah. Yeah, I'm a old shore boy. Yeah? Born in Cambridge, raised in Easton. So... Uh, been around to love this place. Yep. You know, so um anyways, um they said we'll be over the house at six o'clock and we'll do a rehearsal and see if you know, try out, you know. So I said Now how much singing had you done prior to that? None. None, okay. <laughs> Besides standing in front of the mirror with my mother's broom, <laughs> you know. And yeah. And doing uh even though it's funny because you'd mentioned it Elvis Presley before, uh some Elvis stuff, but I was uh, very infatuated with the Rolling Stones. Okay. And you take some of their early, because they were doing uh, some of the old Chicago blues and, and, and that kind of feel back in 70, uh, 63 and 64. And they were, uh, they studied, they loved that style of blues, Memphis blues. And, um, and that, you know, that's like a three, four chord uh, bluesy effect. And the Stones picked up on that and a lot of their stuff. Um, that sound, I just love that sound. So, and, and uh, as um, time went on, that moved into uh, the countryside of it. And uh, but we won the talent show. Okay. <laughs> and uh, and history was made. And, <laughs> and then I had, yeah, and then I had another band saying, "Hey, you're looking to expand this," and I was like, "I'm in." So. Uh, yeah, so that was in 67. So I've been knocking around for 56 years. Yeah. When you first started playing in front of people, was it difficult? I, I didn't realize it, you know, when I did the rehearsal tryout. Um, I didn't know what I was getting myself into until we were actually at the talent show itself. Right. And the curtains went up and it was like, <laughs> people what now my love Them people here <laughs> and it, it was uh it was fun but uh, the first you know the first getting into that first song in front of a you know a room probably probably back in it was probably about six or seven hundred people in the auditorium and uh it's a good crowd it was a real good crowd and uh so but it you know it, it carried on and uh and just got through that and and then fortunate enough to meet you know the musicians that i did meet throughout the trip so mm -hmm. and uh including the road kings themselves so i mean we had uh we had about three or four iterations of the uh road kings and now we've settled in the uh billy west on guitar 48 years him and I've been together. So, uh, uh, Charlie Burdell on bass guitar, mm -hmm. 41 years. Okay. <laughs> and Roger, I would kid everybody, the rookie, the rookie, the drummer, <laughs> he's only been with us 22. So, uh, okay. Johnny, come lately. <laughs> and now some original song from Bird Dog and the Road Kings. Cakes and rockfish too We thanked the Lord and said the blessing But what we forgot to do Was to thank the man who by hand Helped put food upon our plate The man that dipped the crabs Hooked the fish and cut the bait The 
man that works our rivers, he's our neighbor, he's our friend. His backbone and his bones, the way he makes his living. I'm talking about the man, talking about the water man. I'm talking about the man try to line the crabs, talking oysters and working the beef. Talking about the man who makes his living on the water every day. I'm talking about the man. Talking about the water man 3 a.m. we'll find him in his boat and on his way Fishing nets, beating lines, overworked and on the bay Talking about the man Talking about the water man I'm talking about the man Talking about the water man Try to line 3,000 foot long Or be the man at the other end of 20 foot tongs Or be out in the weather Whether it wind or it rain Sleet and snow, you got to go Cause no work means no pay You see him out on our rivers He's our neighbor, he's our friend His backbone and his boats The way he makes his living about the man talking about the water man talking about the man try to line and crash talking oysters and work at the bay talking about the man who makes his living on the water every day i'm talking about the man talking about the water man 3 a.m we'll find him in his boat and on his way fishing net beat the lines Work and underpaid. I'm talking about the man. I'm talking about the water man. I'm talking about the man. I'm talking about the water man. I'm talking about the man. I'm talking about the water man. Long ago, and he told me 
she drove him crazy. He'll do anything for her. Oh, but she did him wrong. Those tropic island tunes I'm going to Hooper's Island I'm going to Taylor's Island I'm going to Tillman's Island I'm going to Get Island But while the bee keeps a calling me near Look out island here I come, I'm going to Smith Island, I'm going to James Island, I'm going to Deal Island, I'm going to Bullets Island, I'm going to Hooper's Island, I'm going to Taylor's Island. I'm going to Tillman Island. 
Are. Good drummer, though. Great drummer. Great drummer. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, the rumor mill says that uh, uh, Mr. West's guitar does not have a um, a serial number on it. Is that true? It does. It does have a... It does, but it is one that was uh, that Paul Reed Smith made himself. It's not a factory-made guitar. Oh. Yeah. Now, this goes back That's to... That's the uniqueness of it. Right. Yeah. How far back does that go? I think. I think. I'm trying to think. That was in the early '80s. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if Paul was still making them in his own house there on West Street in Annapolis, but um, wherever he left the house and had a garage or whatever his next step was before the big uh, shop up in. Uh, Stevensville. Um, he had an office there on West Street, but it was not in his home. That was the first place that I ever met Paul because I booked him for entertainment for the coronation, for lack of a better word, of the new mayor of, um, of Annapolis, who I'd been campaign manager for, Al Hopkins. And so Paul... I went over to Paul's place to talk to him about it, and they didn't charge much. In fact, Paul's always kind of interested me in that he doesn't really consider himself to be a very good guitar player. Oh, he's pretty good. I think he's wrong. He's pretty good. <laughs> I think he's, he's pretty wrong. good. Yeah. Uh, we had him out here when uh, our new uh, amphitheater was done. Uh, booked him out here with um, a boy from Winchester, who I can't remember his name, but was quite a good player, and then had some singers who were excellent. But back to Paul for a minute. So that guitar is almost fifty years old. Uh, it's in it's forty. Yeah, yeah, that's about right. Sure does have a nice tone to it too. Yeah, it was. I it I believe it was the first uh, his first experiment with uh, bird's eye maple too. And it's just a beautiful guitar and beautiful yeah. sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Um, was Billy involved with this this band in the um, in, no, in the school? No, by no means. None of those guys. Billy was a uh, we. I ran into Billy in nineteen seventy five. Oh, okay. Yeah, at not far from here, Little Jimmy's down in Delmar. Heard of it? Yeah, I mean that was like a really that was like a happening music scene. Well, Paul Reed Smith told told me once that he played there and there. Yeah, that was. I mean, that was a place. I mean, that was that was a place to go if you really wanted to hear music. Because it was, they had, they just really had, they had it going on. And I lived in Easton, and I I would drive over. Uh, that's a that's you know. a hall. Yeah. So anyway, they booked us in there, and we played there a few times. And, uh, I, and by, back then, um, the Road Kings had broken up for about the third time, and. Um, um, Rick Hester was the bass player back then. We just did a duo. And we had a six-piece band open up for us at Little Jimmy's. Okay. And Billy West was the guitar player. Ah. And the drummer of that band said, hey, man, I've got a guitar player for you. And I'm like, he says, he says, our guitar player. <laughs> <laughs> Serious. <laughs> and and you that's how play. I met. Well, I'd heard him play on stage, but he was pretty much doing, they were do, pretty much doing music by what the record did. Okay. And all of a sudden, after the show, he's sitting around, and the first first song that I heard him play was uh, Yankee Doodle Dixie. Stay tuned for the next installment of Bird Dog Wheeler and the 
Road Kings from here in Easton, Maryland.